Well, we got an engine back up and running. Oh, I didn't realize that. Holy shit, that means it's the engine we built. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna delete this. Oh my god, that means the engine. I didn't hear it, but I felt it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you're like. <laughs> you're just like... like. Yeah. She sounded crisp, very crisp. Spent some serious time cleaning this thing out and I just re-lubed up the O-rings and, and installed all 1050 ID injectors in the primary rail. And then I'm about to put a whole secondary rail with all the 25 or 2600s that I've been saving up over here hidden away. But let me show you how much aluminum was in just the runners. Looks like somebody had bad diarrhea or something. This is like round four of doing it. but. Look at that. That's not like grease. That's not anything other than aluminum mixed in oil. That was runner number eight. So uh, the fourth, fourth rotor. So I cleaned all of that out multiple times obsessively. Got the whole block all together. Got the oil pan back on. But more importantly, I got my little, my little uh, tensioner on as well. I built that out myself. It's not so much to put tension on the belt. The belt's still I don't want to wear out even the front roller bearing that's in here, you know, the, the ball bearing that's now in the front cover. This isn't putting pressure on it as much as just taking that little bit of slop out. Dream situation is that the alternator would just simply, you know, roll out that way, but just given the chassis and all that, that's not going to happen. Everything is super, super square, so it wouldn't even want to fall off anymore. I'm going to take this off one more time to drill the heim joint, the correct steering. As he was working on the rack, he's getting the rest of that and he just cleaned up the intercooler and is about to weld it back together. Jesus. Oh, that was another thing Logan said was if, if this engine wasn't balanced properly, having it hard mounted to the chassis, uh, we would have felt it by now. There we go. I think that's one of my favorite things about this car so far, is that the clutch is so well engineered for clearance and all that, it feels like an OEM car. Well, she's a slightly offset, but that's what, that's the point. Offset. <laughs> uh, so if you're offset, I'm gonna be, I'm not Quavo, I'm gonna be... To, to take off. Take off, yeah, I'm take no, off. To, to, take to, off. To, to take off. No, to, to take off. That's me. The I don't need, I don't need to say my own name anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> rack, 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 <laughs> Point is, is that this looks good. So we just got the steering pretty well figured out, but this is my crazy little contraption to drill a heim joint into my alternator mount to then be able to hold the steering going through at this slight 13, 14 degree angle. And so what you'll see is that. But what the world sees is this tw double twist, backflip somersault thing that you would see at the Olympics. Isaiah had a good idea on telling me to film this before I got myself hurt. My uh, pilot hole actually went really well. And so now comes medium sized hole before we go to whatever the big drill bit is that'll fit the massive tap. This thing's huge. You need to get a drill, you need, look. This thing's huge, so you at least need to get a drill bit that gets close to the inner, smaller size of where the threads will be. Well, as I was working over tabs for mounting brakes, I just did my favorite thing ever. I drilled an 11 16 inch hole, not with a hole saw, but with a drill bit through a piece of aluminum. And look at that, it turned out really good. I multiple times over tried to constrain this from moving. Wood is soft, so I learned a lot. Nice and smooth, ready for being tapped. Ooh, that's like a, is it gonna let me turn? No, it's not. Stay in here. That would be. Tapping this has been one of the most enjoyable processes. Tapping a lot of things is an enjoyable process. But this one, you get to use lube, 
goes in, comes out. All the teeth I can just feel are just spot on. There's been no binding. It's gotta go in kind of an angle. Oh, right away. Catches threads right away. I want to share with you guys more of the minute details of what it takes to get this steering rack proper. From this angle here, I'm going to hold the GoPro in the right angle. You can see I'm, I'm very clearly trying to line it up square. So from one plane, as you can call it, that plane, the rack is in line. From this side, okay, let's try and get it to where it's kind of even. If you do that, that's, that's dumb. You do that, that's dumb. You want to get kind of an even even angle on both of these joints because that puts me somewhere right here. The steering is back here. Bring it up here. We'll cut this piece somewhere in here and then put the other joint right here and that joint will be opposite of this one. So these two are canceling each other out with lumpiness and so then these two will as well. You see this? That's going to cause me problems. So we're going to have a second heim joint here to help stabilize all of this. This whole thing doesn't want to do that sort of thing. A couple of very important things about this piece. This one we just picked up is smooth bore. That is not a traditional solution. I mean, obviously they sell it. The point is we're gonna be drilling, I am drilling straight through here and here and putting these 10.9 bolts onto this thing. These things have some of the highest shear strength rates. You can see right there, 10.9. And then we're also going to weld it. Normal pieces like this, you can see they got kind of set screws and it's got its own shape, preventing it from doing those sort of things. I don't know why I think I was thinking this thing was solid. Hollow? Yeah. And this will go somewhere here. It does not bind up at all, turning like that. Finally, having front brakes on this car. I don't know how to feel. It's bittersweet. That tab's really clean. So we'll probably have something on the lower control arm to hold them. Oh yeah, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put gloves on. But only for one reason, skin cancer. I'm very delicate. Where's the Bluetooth pedal? <laughs> That's the downside to it. You have to like put like a locating beacon on it. Okay, flats go to this. Here. Yeah, see how it's gonna swing around like that? That other heim joint will prevent this. I think your spot for the uh, heim joint's better. I'm super excited to work on this one. I'd say two thirds of it is the original parts, the parts I need. These are the irons, these are the irons that I bought many years ago and they were lost infamously. So I need to replace this one with that one, it needs machine work, and then we have this housing as well. This is my commitment to another one of my projects. Super exciting, randomly came up. You guys don't want repetitive content, and neither do I. So I'm skipping a lot of the steps, got the engine back in, got the ignition system connected back on solely so that way I have power and ground ran to the block so we can do a compression test. The reason I'm curious is that it's not a situation where it's, it's ran. This is completely a fresh block, no ignition done yet. So I'm curious to see what this little tester tells me. If you've ever owned a rotary, particularly a second gen, you get the hot starts, cold starts, you've got the automatic transmission fluid trick. If that rings a bell, you understand what I'm dealing with here. Often you would have to put automatic transmission fluid into the spark plug hole to get compression to get the engine to start. So again, curious, what does it look like when you've just rebuilt an engine? I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on because oddly enough, with the ports open, oh my God, this engine's so loud, just <laughs> Yeah, okay. Rotor 4 was the worst overall. Let's see how Rotor 4 does. Ooh, 
Rotor 4 came back. Yeah. Feels really good to have taken an engine that had an issue and to have fixed it. I just tacked this thing all together so the table is much less wobbly. God, it was driving me nuts. I'm going to save you guys the drama that I just dealt with because these were a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah, that, that's part of the reason why. There was like Loctite or something on there. Okay, so here's the real shining moment. This should probably go on like this. So this piece isn't just something you can buy online. You actually have to call the company. I just happened to notice when they were showing pictures of everything, they had it all together and there was this piece. Can I just buy that one alone? Like, yep, 40 bucks. We want this to go kind of like this. Not the biggest fan of having a hex drive just sitting on the back of this exposed, but that's where you can add a fuel pump if you really wanted to. Looks like some sort of gun from Halo. And we just got ourselves power steering. <laughs> right there. Damn it. Okay. As Isaiah is currently welding onto the radiator, what he's doing is making it much easier to service the 20 AM lines. Right now they were hitting into that frame end. He's also going to be adding a swirl tank. All right. No, that's all good. That's, see, this is so exciting. It's a lot of cool. Pack it and it moved over. Yeah. But now I had to melt that and move that into position. Yeah, I believe in you. Damn. Were you able to see it move? All in one shot. <laughs> I'm working on finishing up the fuel rails. So we have two fuel rails fed, getting now gonna be E85. I got another one of these tanks. So that way, this is actually, the one that's used on the Teza is a power steering tank. And we're gonna be using the exact same thing here for the power steering. We got the power steering system all mounted up. We're gonna try and flip it upside down. It's gonna be an upside down setup because otherwise it points towards the engine. It's been a minute since I filmed you like working on the car like that. Like, like getting getting dirty with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I miss those days. We got the whole fuel system all primed and it shot a leak in my face, but got both fuel rails working. We are just priming the oil system so that way we can make sure oil flows through it, obviously. And Isaiah is scrambling to get the coolant system working now. We're gonna try starting it and Isaiah doesn't know. <laughs> Without coolant. I'll make sure all my sensors come on. Okay, all sensors look good. We got an engine back up and running. Ooh, looks alien. Looks so cool though at the same time. Be like, you set it up so it's already screwed on all the way. Kind and then you can, okay, okay, okay. I've been doing it for a few okay. weeks, dude. I've been doing it okay. for a few oh, weeks. Oh, your shoulders, you just gotta dust those off a little bit. I really did have to deliver <laughs> dust though. <laughs> okay, Isaiah's running cameraman here. I'm gonna be on the ones and twos. <laughs> I'll be on the threes and fours. <laughs> I don't like to take responsibility, so I'll just watch. <laughs> The turbo sounds sick. That, what that? I think it's just fast, fast. Yeah, oh, oh my god, yeah. I was like, that's, I was like you know what? It's, it, I even was cutting fuel out of it, and it was still tens. And then as soon as you got revving and you hear that crispness, yeah. 13. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Oh my god. You could hear that turbo finally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>